Now it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce Linus Pauling, who will chair the symposium. I've known Dr. Pauling for over 30 years. He was my freshman chemistry teacher at Caltech, where I was an undergraduate. <clears throat> he was, of course, a wonderful teacher, but being 17 years old at the time, I really didn't appreciate my unique privilege. Uh, I did so, however, many years later, when I myself taught freshman chemistry. <laughs> At that time, uh, I had my, an opportunity to reacquaint myself with Dr. Pauling's famous general chemistry text. It was, as many of you know, the leading general chemistry text of its time. Uh, but what really set this book off from all the others uh, is that its author had personally discovered many of the most important principles of modern chemistry uh, and wrote them in his introductory text. I'm certainly unaware of any other scientist in recent history of whom that could be said. So, without further delay, I'd like to present my freshman chemistry teacher, <laughs> Linus Pauling. Thank you. I like being with crystallographers. I uh, am happier when I'm attending a meeting, an ACA meeting, than any other meetings. And I consider myself essentially a crystallographer. Uh, I think there was an element of chance involved when I was appointed a teaching fellow at the California Institute of Technology and three months or four months before I went from Oregon to California, I got a letter from A. A. Noyes, the chairman of the Division of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, saying that he had decided that my work should be in X-ray crystallography with Roscoe G. Dickinson, one of the earliest American pioneers in X-ray crystallography. And I have no idea how Noyes happened to make that decision, but it was surely a fortunate one for me. I've enjoyed coming now for a number of years to the ACA meetings. During the last three years, much of my time, perhaps half percent of my, half, 50 percent of my time, I have spent working on uh, the nature of the so-called icosahedral quasicrystals. In three years ago at the meeting in Stanford of ACA, I reported that I had looked at the uh, high resolution electron micrographs showing these rows of atoms of uh, the MNAL6 quasi crystal, and I measured the angles. Here you had a five fold axis, what looked like a five fold axis. So when I drew lines through the rows of axes of, of atoms, they should be 36 degrees apart. They didn't, they turned out not to be 36 degrees apart, but 35 or 37 or something like that, such that there were angles of 109.5 degrees, the tetrahedral angle rather than 108 degrees, which is what you would expect for a five-fold axis. It's taken three years for me to get a paper reporting that published, but I finally have published it just this month. And here, uh, Peter Pauling and uh, Zelik Herman uh, repeated my measurements on several electron, high-resolution electron micrographs, and we all got this tetrahedral angle. They're cubic crystals. Recently, I've uh, analyzed some 30 different uh, neutron and X-ray diffraction photographs, powder photographs, and uh, uh, precession photographs. Uh, they all can be indexed with cubic crystals with 820 atoms or 1,012 atoms in the unit of a cubic crystal containing these complexes of uh, 104 or 136 atoms, the same complexes that we discovered, Bergman, Waugh, and I, in 1952, and published papers in 1952 and 1957, in the uh, magnesium aluminum zinc uh, intermetallic compound. 
So I think that this uh, affair of the icosahedral quasicrystals is settled. They are cubic crystals <laughs> with in icosahedral twinning. And the icosahedral twinning results from the fact that they involve these big icosahedral complexes of more than 100 atoms in the complex. And uh, uh, they simulate, they have icosahedral disaggregate of cubic crystals in 20 different orientations, icosahedral twinning, uh, has uh, icosahedral point group symmetry, which, however, does not in any of the preparations that I've seen evidence about published, does not extend down to the atomic level or the level of small numbers of atoms. Instead, on the way down, you begin to get translational operations corresponding to formation of cubic crystals, and uh, they manage by twinning to uh, achieve the icosahedral point group symmetry. Perhaps someday someone will succeed in making crystals that show, or making aggregates of atoms that show icosahedral symmetry without having uh, translational operations, but it hasn't been done yet. 